All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Trioxel Podcast. We are here today with Dylan Mercer or Mercier. How do you say that, Dylan? Mercier. Mercier. Close. Yeah, you, you said it like the French Canadians, Mercier. <laughs> Mer- Mercier. Okay. Yep, yep. Dylan Mercier of D2 Contracting, and you are out of Brighton, Michigan. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Brighton, Michigan. All right. And you are primarily into the excavating, excavating yep. side of the Underground business. excavating. Pretty much anything we can do with an excavator. Nice. So Dylan was one of our first uh, success stories on Triaxel app. He he reached out to me after he was only on a couple of weeks. Told me about this connection made, and we've we've chatted a couple of times since then. He's a great dude, and he's a young man hustling really hard to to make a name for himself and and kind of and get a good business going. So we're happy to have him on here today and and dig into uh, his his business up there in Michigan. And uh, he was just telling me about some frost laws in, in Michigan that are, are pretty interesting and, and new to me. So we'll, we'll peel that back in a little bit here. But tell me, Dylan, a little bit how, uh, you know, how you got started, what interested you to, to get into the construction industry and, and how you found your way to own your own company at a young age. <laughs> it's kind of a crazy story. Um, I'm really, I mean, I'm pretty much like first generation when it comes to anything, you know, like what we're used to. I, my, my dad, uh, I grew up working for him. He owned a, owns a, uh, painting company. So I did a lot of painting and gutters and siding growing up, um, which led me to a construction management degree, um, at Eastern Michigan that took me about eight years to do, but I was glad because I got to work a lot of different jobs during that. Um, one of those jobs was I was superintending a, uh, it was a, middle school um they do a lot of uh school renovations in the summertime here uh on like um like public bonds so they're paid with by uh, they're paid with or paid it's all tax dollars that pay for it um and they and they put a lot of money into these schools which i think is great um and i ended up superintending one of these jobs at the time I had no idea what I was doing, even superintending this job. I had no business doing it, but I had a connection there and they were like, they just kind of, you know, put me in the fire and said, here you go. Um, good way to learn. And what ended up happening, like a couple weeks into it, um, it kind of, it was a $14 million job that we were doing in eight weeks. So I got real, I was way in over my head after like two, three weeks. So we, they brought on another superintendent and made him in charge of everything inside and I was in charge of everything outside. At the time, they had just, the pavers found a sinkhole when they uh, pulled all the parking lot. They they milled the parking lot and they were, I think they were undercutting it in a couple of places and they found this sinkhole. It ends up being this big, uh, like diesel tank from a really old boiler. Um, so it ended up being a huge nightmare, but that was like really where I got my first like look at, you know, like, bigger style excavating. I had worked for a couple of landscape companies and ran skid loaders and built retaining walls and stuff, but nothing like crazy like that. They had a 335 out there and a 336 pulling a big 5,000 gallon tank out of the ground. And I was just, you know, I spent that entire summer outside working with those pavers and the site work guys. And I learned a lot and I was going into my last semester of college and knew that I didn't want to be in the office because that was the next step up at that job. I just worked all summer, the internship. So I went to my dad and asked for, I I put a presentation together. I told him I wanted a, uh, this was like 2018, 2019. Um, I wanted a skid loader with one of those uh, drum mulchers. And I was like, here's, you know, how you can make your return on investment, blah, 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 this and that. And he was like, this is all great, but I don't know anything about this. Why don't you take this to somebody else? So that's what I did. I took it to somebody else and it worked, believe it or not. Um, and I was with him for a couple of years and pretty much was just running his company until I got to a point and I kind of got a shove by some of my buddies, um, in this industry. And they were just like, go off on your own. And that's what I did. And that was, July of last year and it just I don't know it's it's taken off I'm sorry July of 2022 I opened the LLC and we did our first job August of 2022 um but this past summer was our first 
real season. So it was, uh, it was exciting. So you're not, you're not even into it two years yet. No, we're not even cool. This is the first real, real winter, you know, with employees and, you know, a bigger overhead. We got, uh, you know, like equipment now and stuff. So it's, it's way different than it was last winter. Sure. That's a big deal. And what, and what was the deal with the drum mulcher? You proposed that to somebody else and, and did you end up running that for them? Um, actually I, I went to a land clearing company that was local. Uh, they were real small at the time, like three or four employees. Um, he was like the only guy in the area that had one of those drum mulchers at the time. That was kind of before they got, I feel like they've gotten really popular in the last couple of years. Um, not saying I was in front of the, the times or anything, but it just, um, back then, I think like 2018, they just weren't as popular. And, uh, I found a guy who had one and I didn't really want, I I was, I was like the business side of things. And I think he realized that pretty quickly when I like was selling jobs, not even a week after being there. So he was like, why don't you go like talk to people and, and do your thing and, and like, let's find some guys that can, that can, you know, let's put a solid crew together and do some work. And that's what we did. And we did a lot of right away clearing for the state on road projects and stuff. It was really cool nice. uh, that I got to learn on somebody else's dime that first, you know, year, year and a half. Um, Cause then when I got into it, I was not seasoned, but I, I, I knew what to expect uh, to a certain degree. So I think it helped. Sure. hundred percent. So you kind of started learning about the business side while, you know, helping run that division or that area for somebody else. So you, you weren't a hundred percent in, but you still got your feet wet and, and learned yep. about the sales side and the business yep. side. That's awesome. Yep. That, that's, that's a great that's, way to do it. I was able to correlate, you know, everything I was learning with the construction management degree. Um, you know, all your project delivery methods and, and ways of bidding and estimating, I was able to kind of bring that into it. So it was cool that I, I, looking back, like I've grown a lot. So it was cool to like, you know, progress and figure out, like, I'll never forget the first municipal job I bid for him. I was about 60 grand shy of the next guy. I left that much on the table and it was a good job, like local right in town. And I, I just told him, I was like, I'm really sorry, but we got to do it. Like, we just have to do it. We got it. And that, that was, we ended up doing it. And it, it I think it worked out in, in his favor too, because he's still doing a lot of that. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, yeah, I, I'm glad that I didn't have to do that on my dime. Sure. So I'm forever grateful for, you know, to have a guy who's just like, yeah, come try it out. See what you can do. Yeah. That's awesome. It's because there's not a lot of relationships that would really work like that. You know, like yeah. the, you probably found something pretty good there. So that, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. It was cool. Um, good deal. And yeah, it worked out, man. So you made the leap and you, you had the itch and you wanted to do your own thing and you got the nudge by your buddies. So, so you went out and started your own thing. <clears throat> good, good for you. How, how'd you finally decide to, to do it? That, that, that was your path. Um, I, I, I mean, my entire family, uh, both my brothers are entrepreneurs. My parents are entrepreneurs. I was kind of new in the back of my head at some point I was going to do it. Um, if you ask me today, I wish I would have started three years ago. Um, but I'm glad, like I said, that I did what I did. Um, honestly, I was at the time last, you know, July of 2022, I was even scared to do it then. I mean, my buddies were like, Oh yeah, just do it. It's like, well, it's really easy for you to say, like, just do it. <laughs> it's yeah. like, I make good money right now and I'm not going to make any money. Um, yeah. and, uh, I don't know. I just, I sold, uh, I sold about everything I had and just put all my chips in and nice. it's worked out thus far. Yeah, that's good. You got to yeah. have faith in yourself to, to, you know, faith in yourself is, is more important than, than what other people say or do, but certainly like getting the nudge from them is helpful. But ultimately like you're the one that knows like this is going to work and I'm going to make it happen and yeah. I'm sell all my shit and I'm going for it. So yep. that's yep. awesome. What's, uh, so you're doing, you're doing, you do some pretty decent size excavating jobs, you know, from what I see for, for somebody yep. that's into it for just under two years, that's pretty cool. What's, uh, what's your, what do you like to do? What's your, what's your forte? What's your, What's your favorite service to I, provide? I love underground. I think Utilities. The, yeah, I think the complexity of it. I think, I mean, some days you get your ass kicked and literally put in 20 feet of pipe. And other days you put in a couple hundred feet. Like, it's just, I think because it's ever, like, changing and there's really, like, 
it's when you can really like pin pin it down and, and find a good crew, it's like poetry in motion, um, which we're, we're getting there, uh, which is just so cool to see. Um, but I just, I like everything about it. I like, you know, the danger factor. I, it's just, <laughs> I like it. I've never, um, had the eye. I shouldn't word it this way. I've just never, I get, you know, you start moving big quantities of dirt. I, I, I kind of lose my attention. I, I get a, like, Oh, let's do something else. And I, I get real like all over the place. So the, the sure. underground's cool for me because it's just always like something different. You, you I, never know what you're going to get into. I, I'd have to agree. We, we did a little bit of, of, uh, underground. We did some sewer line work for a local borough here in Clark summit. And, you know, when you're digging holes or you're just moving dirt, there's really not a lot of pressure. You, you just yeah. you just kind of like cruise along. But when you have an eight foot trench, you know, a hundred feet long in the road, and you have to either close that or plate that before the night comes, like yep. it, you know, there's a lot of times like no lunch. You're just moving all day long, and oh, uh, we man, did I it. Can't tell you. Yeah, but it's kind of you know, it's I I like that kind of pressure. I work I always worked a lot better under pressure, and uh, I can see. I've why always said you're into that it. I just thrive when I'm uncomfortable. The, sure. the more uncomfortable I am, I just seem to just, I don't know. I, I like the stress. I like the chaos. It just, it makes my, it, uh, it just calms me down. Sure. Sometimes you regret it a little bit when you're there uh, at nine, yeah. nine o'clock at night, still wrapping up yeah. and the snow's falling and, yeah. and, uh, and everybody's getting cranky and they want to go home. But, you know, yeah, it, I, I, uh, I kept a, uh, we did a utility hookup in a, in a really, really, uh, nice, it's probably one of you know the most wealthy cities around us. Um, real big houses around there, and we do the uh, utility hook up in the fall uh, for one of them. And it was definitely like our hardest one to date because we were on like a, a main road. There was a ton of traffic control. We had a lane shut down, and uh, we had to directional drill the water all the way across the road. And that road spanned you know a couple hundred feet wide, so. It was an entire process, and a lot of people, even the inspectors, looked at me like, "There's no way you're doing all this." Today. I was like, "You just watch." We uh, we did it all in one day, but we were there till eleven o'clock. And one of my best guys, uh, it was his uh, first wedding anniversary that night, and uh, he was <laughs> not happy about that, and neither was his wife. I'm sure. But um, you know, I, I made it up to him after that. Uh, but yeah, stuff like that happens, and you just got to get it done because, like you said, like. In that case, we we couldn't plate the road. I told the city we're doing it. Let's do it. So we did it and, and got through. So it was cool. That's awesome. And you proved to yourself that you could do it. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. You know, it was uh, like, I don't know how many hours straight, but it was a lot. Yeah. Cool. Yep. Good deal. So what would you say as, as a young businessman in especially, you know, the construction industry, is is a beast in itself there's a lot of moving parts there's a lot of things that can make or break your day um and then running a business has has its own challenges so when you combine those you know we're we're in a very hectic fast paced very stressful business but it, it can be very rewarding what would you say as a as a young guy you know just getting into this for your first couple of years what are the, some of the biggest challenges that you run into that you know, whether it's employees or getting equipment or, or landing jobs, what's the, one of the biggest hurdles that you have to overcome? The, the hardest thing at first for me, from an ego standpoint was like realizing that none of these banks want anything to do with me. I thought like, I, I thought for sure, like a certain amount of signed contracts or, or revenue would, you could take that to a bank, uh, and, and, you know, and, and have them work with you. And, I learned that very quickly. Like, that's not how that works. They, they don't trust you for a long time and it takes a lot to, to gain their trust. So that was something that was like super hard for me at first because renting, especially when you're, you know, renting three or four pieces of equipment at a time is really, really painful when you have to pay that bill at the end of the job. You feel like it all just kind of disappears after that. Sure. Um, but now it's, it's really like just staying level headed. And, and like always on a straight and narrow, um, obviously the manpower is always difficult. Um, but I've been pretty lucky, man. I found some really good guys. I've, I've filtered through some not so great guys. I've filtered through some guys that were great who just couldn't cut it in, you know, this kind of environment. Um, 
but to me, like the biggest challenge is, is really just another thing too. Like it's hard for me to, uh, really gain trust in people, especially older people. Um, they kind of look at me like, you sure, you know, like what's going on. And I always tell people like, listen, if I don't, I'll either ask you or I know somebody that does like, I, I I've got enough resources and connections. I like to think I do at least that, uh, there's always someone willing to help me. And I, thank God I do have some of the resources I do. Um, some of the companies we, you know, work under, they are great to me and they'd show up, you know, at midnight if they had to, to fix something just cause I needed help. So it's, it's cool to have that around, especially, you know, as a young guy in the industry, it's, I know it's really hard to get that respect from a lot of the older guys. Um, but I think once they see you working hard and, and getting your teeth kicked in, they're like, all right, you got it. Yeah, you can, you can hang. We'll, we'll, yeah, it can be it can be a buddy of ours. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Good deal. So just put your head down and grind. Honestly, that that's it's there's nothing to it. It's it's not rocket science. Um, it you just got to work. Sure, and deal with the highs and lows. So you are, so you have a slow period right now. We were talking before we kicked off here. Uh, you have some frost laws in place there, so you're kind of stuck sitting on your hands waiting to move some things around. Uh, so I'm from Pennsylvania. We don't have the winters that you guys have up there. Yep. Uh, we have some localized restrictions when it comes to, you know, moving things during, you know, during the end of the winter months, but nothing statewide. So tell me a little bit about that. How, how does this work? And I don't expect you to know all the ins and outs and, yeah. and, and percentages, but like basically you can't move anything at all now. Um, it, it, it's not less, I mean, it's, it's not that crazy, but it, 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 it is in a sense, um, like pretty much you, you can get on a highway or like a federal, you know, like any, um, M dot owned road. So like, obviously there's some smaller highways, um, that you can get on, but it's like, my biggest thing is like, and I ask people this all the time and they're kind of just like, well, I don't really know. It's like, okay, how do you get to that road? And then when you need to get off that road, like how do you get off that road? Cause all our class B and class C roads, it's, it's like a no, no, you can't even, um, you, you can't even. And again, I know we were talking about this earlier, but I, I if I'm correct, our laws, it's 65% of what the truck is capable of, um, during the seasonal weight restrictions. Um, but it's all based off axles too. So a lot of guys, well, you'll, you see crazy stuff. Like the last couple of days, I've seen some wild stuff. Guys pulling around minis on a, on a quad axle low boy, just stuff like that, where it's just like, what? Like, but for some reason, we can't pull our 308 behind a tag, a 25. Well, folks, we apologize for the brief internet interruption there, but now's a good time to hear a word from our sponsor of the Triaxel podcast. And, oh shit, would you look at that? It's the Triaxel app. The Triaxel app is a fast growing platform that leverages a user driven marketplace to source and unload clean fill, materials, machinery, services, and more. Triaxel is 100% free to use and can be found in the app stores. Download it today. Triaxel. Yeah. It's really difficult with the trucking and stuff too, sand and aggregate. Like you're, you're getting less than a half load. Um, I think that's the biggest thing, but that's a killer. I wish I knew I I'm hoping down the road I can learn more about it. Um, but I'm telling you, like you even ask, you know, seasoned guys over here and they're just kind of like, I don't know, just, just don't, don't do anything super heavy. And it's like, all right, yeah. <laughs> I guess we'll just go like that or do it on Sunday night. <laughs> Yeah, that's <laughs> yep. So I'm gonna we're we're gonna roll we're gonna go drop a piece of equipment off on Sunday because it's the only day you can do it, and it's everybody else does it too. We'll, we'll release the podcast after Sunday, so yeah, it's not in case they listen. So, L- so they little life hack, it. yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so with this restriction, is this is it known that this is coming, or is it just like an instant cut off? Like, hey, by the way, um, you can't move anything. It's, yeah, it's, it, one person always starts it off. So you always get that one county, like, uh, obviously Michigan a thumb, right? There was a county up in the thumb. The first one that were red, went red last week, which means like, or the, actually they, they give you like two days of warning and then they, and then, you know, they, they turn them on. Um, 
they went and then a couple others went and it, I mean, they're making the right call because we did have frost and, and our roads do need the, the little bit of love they can get because they're not great. Um, but yeah, I mean, ours went into effect. Uh, they told us yesterday morning and tomorrow, um, we're done. So it, I mean, I'm sure there was a lot of guys moving equipment today. Um, but some, uh, I'd say about 50% of the counties have been off since like Tuesday or Monday this week. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So you have jobs planned. I mean, you have work lined up and, and yep. you, you just got to dance no idea. around this. Yep. Just have it's, to uh, yeah. And it's like not something, you know, I, I can't, I mean, it depends who you're working for, I guess, but like a municipality, for instance, that I'm working for right now, we're going to next week, uh, it's a wastewater treatment plant. Like that, that's been a contract that's been set in stone since last November. So I can't go back to them now and be like, Oh, like, well, since my scope work falls on frost, I was like, I'm going to need some extra help. And they're like, yeah, well, sorry. You're stuck. Um, which, you know, we kind of got unlucky because it's usually a little bit later in the year. You you can make it through February and, and into March before they turn on previous years. They're, you know, usually towards the middle of March and then they kind of carry through April, halfway through April, they turn off. Um, last year, we didn't have them at all because it didn't, we didn't really get any frost. And the only reason I know that is because we were working the whole time and it just, it just never came. It'd be 30, 20 degrees for a week and then turn around and be 50 degrees the next week. This winter was a little bit more harsh, but I'm hoping it's over. I know we'll get a couple more, uh, cold snaps mixed in, but it's looking like 60 or fifties next week. So if everything, if the stars line correctly, they, they should turn them back off next week, but we'll see. That's, that's what's scaring me because, um, then it becomes like a, you know, like a game almost. And they're just, you know, they, if they wanted to, they could leave them on until the end of March. I just, I don't know what they're going to do and nobody else does either. It's, so you're it's literally kind of a just, sit and wait. just waiting. So if you want to work, you got to overpay to move things. You've yep. got to, you've got to haul five ton of material in a, in a truck that can haul 22 ton or whatever yep. the percentages yeah, yeah. end so up our being. Tandem, so our tandem is like five or six ton. That's awful. That's yeah. awful. Nature of the beast. That's well, one of the challenges in the construction industry. Yes, sir. It makes it, a, it, it makes for a fun couple of weeks, but I'm hoping that with the weather next week, it, it, I mean, realistically speaking, they should turn them off, but you never know what I, I don't, I mean, Whoever has the uh, the job to be able to make that call, that's a cool job because uh, I guarantee they're not in the business. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And a lot of people's fate, like you know, is in their hands. So sure. I don't know. I get it. I mean, inf- our infrastructure across the country is failing. It's it's falling apart everywhere. So I yep. get you know whatever you know whatever they think they need to do to try and maintain. I mean, that's certainly in the best interest of the of the taxpayers and the residents, you know, but sometimes it's, it's a burden that you, you know, you don't want to deal with and you just have to work around it, you know? So. Yeah. I, I'm in the same boat. I mean, I get it, but at the same time, it's just like, Oh, this is terrible. Yeah. Well, you get time to go play then take off and yeah. You know, yeah. It go. would be, I wish I would have take the problem is you don't know when it's going to happen. So it's like, and I, I, I kind of called our County and, and the surrounding counties, I called their bluff because they're, they're usually the last ones. And, and believe it or not, they still didn't turn them off. And then that's when our governor stepped in and was like, no, everybody's done. Really? Cause, so uh, the whole state. Yeah. Everywhere. Wow. So you could be in an area where it's not really actually affected as bad. You could be in a Southern, a Southern portion. That's not. Yeah. Yeah. Down by like Chicago, South Bend right there. Wow. Um, I know it's going to be really warm there this coming weekend. Um, but like, they're always, they kind of always start at the borders and, and like the thumb, obviously, because of the bridge in Canada, like it's, it's thought out in their heads. They know what they're doing as far as like where the trucks are coming in from. Sure. Good opportunity for them to make a couple bucks too, pulling people a over. Lot, a lot of bucks, a lot yeah. of bucks. I wonder if there's anything behind that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You never know with those guys. No, you don't. You don't. No. Well, you just have to ride it out and do what you can. So Yep. But you just gotta adapt and overcome. That's that's what I always tell my guys. Just we'll just figure it out. That's it. That's yep. it. So one of the things I thought when you and I spoke back, uh, it was either late summer or early fall, one of the things that I thought was interesting, kinda like your model, the way you're 
you're you're doing this as an er, like an early company is you're you are renting a lot of equipment or you're you're kind of like borrowing from buddies you're not going out and just you know taking out you know loans to buy everything that you need it seems like you have a a pretty good system and you also have some good relationships of guys like helping you out and and giving you equipment at reasonable prices to kind of get rolling there yeah yeah I'm, I, that that was something that like I knew right away just from, you know, spending the time I had in the industry already, it's, it's really easy to, um, you know, go show other companies like how you, like I, I, you know, just go to the companies I look up to the most and just kind of like, you know, walk in their doors and how can I help you? What, what can I do for you? And it's like, well, like, I don't know, like, what do you want? It's like, just let me do something for you. Like, who knows? I might be able to do it, you know, quicker or cheaper or whatever it may be. Um, and that's how I started was just basically selling myself to other companies. And then that fell into, like you said, they're like, Hey, you want to rent our three fifteen? You want to rent our D five? It's like, sure. Yeah. If you, what, I mean, can you give me, you know, 600 bucks off compared to what cat would charge? Yeah, no problem. Like that, that's kind of where it all started. And now I just, I just, everybody I talk to, I'm like, like I, we got a, um, I got a buddy that I met, um, because I rented one of his minis all summer. Uh, he's got a 323 next gen, with like 40 hours on it. I don't know what he does, but he's in a niche market because he's got a bunch of equipment just sitting around doing nothing. <laughs> I was talking to him the other day and he's, uh, he's like, you got, like, do you need anything? And I was like, yeah, we need a, we need a big, uh, excavator for a while. He's like, you can use my 323 till July. I was like, perfect. I'll take it. And we agreed on a price and we're going to, um, I don't know how we're going to move that, but we are supposed to be using that next week. So that's, that's why, again, it's like, I hope they shut them off, but I really don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Well, relationships, I mean, relationships in this business, in this business, any business are key, you know, and if you can yeah. maintain those, um, that's awesome because it, it is tempting, you know, you don't like everybody hates renting a machine and then paying a $6,000 you know, oh, monthly rental bill or 12 grand or whatever it is. And it's just like gone. And you, and, and me personally, I always looked at it like, man, that could have, that could have been a $2,000 monthly payment, you know, yep. and I always look at and run the numbers, but you know, certainly with the size jobs that you're doing and the, and the big pieces of iron that you need, like, you know, that's a, that's a great way to think about it and, and do it. And I think that could potentially attribute to your success down the road, thinking out of the box and kind of doing it that way. Cause a lot of guys don't do that. They will just go and sign their name on the dotted line for yep. anything and everything that they can get. And then, when you hit these times, you know, like you, you're being forced to stay home. You can't work. Um, yeah. that adds up quick, you know, and it does, that can be a, a big hit. And for some of those guys, if they can't get out for two months, they don't have enough money in the bank to make those payments. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's scary enough for me as it is. I couldn't imagine having, you know, three, $4,000 payments on some bigger excavators, $5,000 payments on some bigger excavators. It was just, I mean, it, it wouldn't feel good. I know that. Um, and I think, you know, the fact that I don't have that weighing, on, I mean, I have a lot weighing on my shoulders, but the fact that I don't have something like that weighing on my shoulders, because trust me, I can't tell you how many times in the last two months I've had the conversation with my cat salesman, like, oh, let's just price one out. And he's just, <laughs> but I've got a really good salesman too. He's on my side and he knows like, dude, no, he's like, rent. He, and he even straight up told me yesterday, he's like, rent that 323. You'd be making a mistake not to. Like, even if I RPO'd you a machine, like it just, you're not, you can't get that for what it is. And I'm just, it, it, it works. But going back to the, you know, building those relationships, this industry for some reason, and I don't know if it's just because it's around us, but um, one, one thing that I value, um, you know, just as a person, and I always have just because it's the way I was raised, you can't, you can't bite the hand that feeds you. So um, I think what helped me with, especially some of these bigger companies is, is uh, the, the loyalty that I showed them, you know, from the beginning. And, and even now, like there's, there's times where I've been asked to now bid jobs that some of these other companies are doing. And I'm just like, no way. Like I am not even going to get in the middle of that sure. and I'll call them and tell them. So I think that that also has really, really helped me because I now have their trust too. So they're like, all right, like, you know, we can work together. I'm, I'm not in this to get you guys and you're not in this to get me. So I think, uh, 
I don't know, or I just work around a bunch of nice guys that that uh, want to take care of me. I don't know, but it's it's awesome. I think it's a combination of both. I yeah, think it is because you know even sometimes the the nice guys will still won't tell you that they're going to go out and bid that job, you know, because they're looking out for themselves. But no, I think it's a combination of both, and and uh, certainly relationships go a long way, and it could be make or break for a company, hundred percent. Oh, it could know? be. I, like I wouldn't, I would not be where we're at if I didn't have some of these people. Um, I was put on really big jobs very quickly, and was just like, whoa, <laughs> like, this this is what you guys do every day, and it was it just allowed me to kind of like you know really jump through that hoop a lot quicker than most can. Yeah, for sure. Social media is is a, is a big thing, obviously. So when I started in business, I, I got into business officially around like 2002, 2003, and uh, I had a flip phone, a Nextel <laughs> chirp, chirp flip phone back then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with you guys, though, I mean, it's, it's really cool. You know, social media is – there's so many negatives to it, but there's so many positives too. And I think it's really cool to see a lot of you young guys. Like I, I even see on your social media, your buddies with Taylor White up in Canada – Yep, correct yep, that Taylor yep. White um and then you know just seeing you guys like connecting and, and communicating and collaborating and sharing ideas and and resources like all across the country with guys like you would never never have connected with and you wouldn't find this in your in your little local network you know like no I, it's it's insane it really is I, there's no way to describe it I mean so many people like you know old friends of mine that I, you know, have grown apart from there. And, you know, I, I catch up with them every now and then they're like, wait, you're, you're going where with who the kid you met on Instagram. It's like, yeah, he's, they're like, he's my fucking best friend. Like I, I'm telling you three of my best friends are kids that I met on Instagram, which is insane. Yeah. So, so not only are you making friends, but you also have people to bounce ideas off of. Like if you get stuck or you don't know what to do now, you have a whole, another network of people that you can lean on to, to yeah. ask these questions, you know, and some, you know, it sounds like you have a really great like local network where you have a lot of really awesome people that you can lean on and ask questions. But if you didn't have that, you could at least, you know, ping somebody from two States over and say, Hey man, how, how, how'd you do this? You know, I don't have anybody yeah. here I can ask. So I think that's what, one of the, the really cool things I see social media doing for people that use it in that way is, is you just, the, the possibilities to connect and and share ideas and techniques and struggles and wins, you know, like it's just endless. It's, it is pretty cool. It's really cool too. Like, especially like three of my good buddies were all at like different places in business too. Like, you know, Taylor, they've been around for forever. You know, he, he's kind of taken over, he's taken over his dad's reins. You got like my buddy, Luke Payne, he's just skyrocketed. Um, a couple of my other buddies, like it just, it's everybody's got a different perspective on things and they'll even call me and I give them a different perspective on things. And they're like, Oh yeah, I guess that makes sense. Like it's, it, there's so many different ways to look at things. And I think really being able to step back and like open your eyes and see the bigger picture too. I think that's a big thing. Um, you know, as far as like a growth standpoint goes, which I don't know, like it's, it's, you know, just talk about this. We're, and I'm getting a little sidetracked, but me, Taylor, Luke, and Will are going to Big Sky in like two and a half weeks. It'll be our, we did it last year and we're doing it again this year. And again, it's three dudes I met on Instagram. Like going to Big Sky, it's just, it's weird. If you, when you say it like that, it's like, hey, I met these guys on Instagram while I'm going on a <laughs> snowmobile trip. Yeah. And most people are like, what? But yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's cool because we can go there and talk about all kinds of stuff and hardship and everything. Sure. Plus, Big Sky is freaking awesome. Oh, dude, it's amazing. You ever been? I I skied there, yeah, in 2000. Yeah, been a long time. I, I actually went to Bozeman, uh, Montana State and Bozeman for one year. Really? So, yeah, yeah. So I love Montana. It's awesome. I haven't been back since, but I will get there someday. But Big Sky country, it's, man, I, I love it. I, I got my first taste of it last year. I'd never ridden a snowmobile, and they took me up way out in the back country. And it was miserable, to say the least, because uh, – it's really hard to ride a snowmobile out there, but I had a great time and I'm looking forward to it again this year. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And again, mutual interest, mutual industry, and you know, you made some buddies and you can shoot the shit and talk work a little bit and, and have fun with it. So yeah, that's pretty yeah. cool. It's that's really pretty cool. cool. 
So what's your, like, what, where do you see yourself in, in 10 years? What's your, what's your goal for D2 contracting? Do you want to stay kind of small, keep it low key? You're looking to kind of blow up and, and, and take on some bigger projects. What are you hoping for? Um, What's, What's the vision? To be honest, um, you know, I, I, I think about it a lot. Um, I, de- I, I know I don't want to be, you know, one of these conglomerates with two, 300 employees. Um, but I, I think like, uh, somewhere around the 50 mark would be like great for me. I think that's a, you know, a small enough company where it's still super personable. Everybody kind of knows each other. Um, but you're still out there doing a lot of work. Um, I, I just don't see us like really s- slowing down or, or, not, I just, I'm addicted to the chase. So I'm always chasing after the next big thing and they just continue to grow. And with that, great people are coming along. So I hope that it continues to, uh, you know, go on an upward trend. I can't say I wouldn't be, you know, I'm sure it, you could do really well with, you know, a, a good six man crew. You could do a lot of pipe if everybody knew what was going on and, and get a lot done. But I, I think I want something bigger than that. I, I, I want to, really like have a place that people can come work where like someone like me, when I was younger, I thought that I was so much smarter than I was and I wasn't, but I just, it would just took that one person to give me a chance. And then, you know, you get that chance and it's like, Oh wow. Like you actually sort of could figure it out. Like, I know you weren't very good at it at first, but you, you made it or you did it, you know, you got that job and it's, I don't know. I, I, I want to do it for, you know, some of the, these younger kids. Like we have a lot of high school uh, kids out of high school that work for us now, like in the summertime laborers and stuff. And it's hilarious to see, you know, three 18 year olds out on a job, like with zero clue that's going on. It is, it is so funny because I was there. I was that kid. Like, I mean, I grew up doing siding and painting and gutters. So the first time I was on a job, like I was just like, what in the hell? Like, this is so different. Um, I don't know. It's, it's cool. Does it, does it frustrate you having three 18 year olds, you know, on your um, payroll looking at it going like, man, you guys aren't getting enough done. We're it. I have a, I've got a tolerance, uh, obviously cause you know, nobody's going to want it as bad as, is you know, me for instance. So like, I definitely do have a tolerance. Um, but yes, it is frustrating. Like my younger brother worked for me this past summer and he's, he's never had a real job in his life. Um, but you know, we, we played sports growing up like all the time, even in the summer. And it's, he's exactly like I was when he was, you know, 18, right out of high school, going into college. And I would like to watch him grow over the summertime. And, and, you know, he's, he, by the end of the summer, he's down in the hole, like installing a hydrant assembly on a six inch water main in the middle of the road. I'm just like, fuck yeah, dude, this is awesome. Yeah. That's great. (laughs) Yeah. That yeah. Awesome. So I don't know. It's, it's the, like the looks that we, you know, get sometimes from inspectors or like certain municipalities or wherever it may be. It's just, it's, it's, you can't, I mean, I, I just, it, it's indescribable. It's hilarious, but, um, you sent the guess. high school kids over to, to tap yep. the water main. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. But it's, it's cool, man. I, I, uh, I don't know. I, I really would like to grow this into something big, but, uh, we're not, I'm not in a rush and I'm kind of just going with, you know, things as we progress. So sure. we'll see where it takes us. Yeah. That's a good attitude. I mean, a lot of different obstacles that get thrown at you. The economy is looking like it might get a little rough here for a while. So you got to kind of, you know, you're, you're at the phase where you're building and growing, but you also have to know you got to be smart and uh, make sure you make the right yeah. moves because things could shut down quick. Even, even governmental stuff, you know, if it gets squirrely enough, um, you know, some of these, some of these projects, you know, might not be around the way they've been coming in. So, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Our, uh, I will say our, our governor is, uh, she just dropped another bill, another, like, uh, uh, it's a crazy number. Everybody's praising her right now, but it's something in the billions. So she, she's spending it before she's done here in the, in yeah. the next couple of years, but, and it's all infrastructure too, which is awesome. I think it kind of the trickle down effect too. Like it affects a lot of us. Uh, cause I'm, I mean, shoot, I, I, going through some of these bid websites every day. I, we were bidding, uh, remove and replace, uh, for a school district, just sidewalks and asphalt, um, 
today that I found. It's they're out there, and a lot of guys don't want those small jobs too. So we love those. Fine, take the work nobody else wants, man. Yep, yeah, That's, that can work out very well. So uh, we actually we have a, a scholarship that we implemented for some of our local high school students here this That's year. That's awesome. What, um, like, if you had any advice for young kids that are contemplating either getting into the construction industry or going into business for themselves, uh, and I'm putting you on the spot here because I didn't really ask you before, but if you had any advice to give to any of the young guys out there that might be listening to this, what would that be from a, a young Dylan that's, you know, really aggressive and, and hitting this hard and, and making a name for himself out there? Um, I think the biggest thing is just like, be patient. Um, you, you gotta, you also have to like be tough. It's, it's, I know it sounds cliche, but you've got to be tough. Like then, and that's the kids who aren't, and it's no, no shot at them. They just, you know, they're just not meant for this industry. Um, you know, I think the ones that can, you know, get through all the, name calling and oh like dude what the fuck are you doing like you idiot like i think if you can put up with that for the first couple years and and get past that um the i mean literally the it's the world is an endless opportunity because there's so much opportunity in this industry to begin with um but for a lot of people and i remember you know being 18 working for my first home builder. And again, like he'd be like, go grab X tool or Y tool. And I'd come back with something completely different. And he'd just be like, what in the fuck is wrong with you, dude? Like I just told you this last week and I'm just like, I'm sorry. Like it's, it's a huge learning curve and it's not something that uh, is taught to everybody. Um, And it's, it's gate kept in a sense where like you got to just, figure it out trial and error and you're going to look dumb a lot before you feel like you actually like, Oh, I get this. And, uh, I think accepting that and just kind of tucking your tail between your legs and, and, uh, you know, just, just being humbly confident almost about it is, right. uh, the way to go. Just don't, uh, don't show up and act like, you know, everything. Cause it'll, 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 uh, go back in your face really quickly. Um, yeah, it just, it's not a good look at all. Yeah. I think that's you know, really good advice. And and having a big ego as a young guy coming into this business, you'll get humbled really quick, you know. Yeah. And and a lot of guys, you know, there, there is it's construction, man. There's going to be a little bit of ball busting, there's going to be yeah. you know, razzin and guy it, like, you know, but it, at the end of the day, you know, just trying to keep it keep it fun, keep it loose, you know, kind of like, you know, just have a good time and uh it's part of being the new guy on the job. It's just just how it yeah. goes. You got to you got to walk through those fires to, to keep, you know, working your way up. So it's, I think it's it, no different than like a sports team or something. Um, sure. I, I, I try to get a lot of kids that like we're in athletics and stuff. Cause it seems to like correlate. Well, um, you get that like competitive drive out of somebody like, you know, like it, where, where they turn around and say, Hey, fuck you too. It's like, yeah, <laughs> there you go. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. You're hired. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, like it's, you know, there's, this is a competitive industry and it's cutthroat. Like, it's if, if you can't do it, we'll gladly go find the next person that can. Um, sure. So you definitely, you know, you, you got to be confident, but sure. humbly confident. <laughs> and I think patience is yeah. a big one, too, because a lot of I, I see and and I, I'm not really one to speak because historically I'm one of the most impatient people <laughs> you'll ever meet in your yeah. life. But I've learned over the years to to like, you know, expectations, you just got to kind of dial them back a little bit. But I I think when when I was younger, I I realized I was starting off at the bottom. You know, I, I, my first summer, my first summer job after getting my license, I worked for a contractor and I started off sweeping floors and that's what I expected. I didn't expect to say, Hey, go uh, give me the saw. I'm going to go cut rafters for you. It just doesn't work like that. I didn't know shit about anything, you know? Um, But I think now, you know, a lot of the younger kids that maybe they, realize that they don't belong or it's not for them as they come in and, you know, they want the keys to the dozer the first day. And, and, you know, when you say, no, here's the shovel, get in the trench. They're like, oh man, you know? Um, yeah. So, so it's, you're, you're smirking like, yeah, I've I know. got horror stories already. I mean, I, yeah. I, I got, let's like, hear them. <laughs> all right. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, no shot at anybody either, but it's like, I, uh, we, we had uh one kid working for us. He was a great kid. Like, 
super, you know, level headed, but he wanted to be an operator right away. Um, and, uh, he was messing around at the shop one day. We sent him back to the shop. We were doing a concrete job. Like I said, we do everything. Um, but we got in with the, the local municipality here in Brighton. So it was like a no brainer for me. I was like, let's go do some sidewalk boys. Um, we were doing some, uh, flat work porn sidewalks and we needed some more uh two by fours and stuff so we sent him back to the shop to get two by fours and for some reason he pulled the mini out of the shop and he was messing around probably trying to you know get some seat time or something and uh this was a week after i had just closed on our new shop and uh he was taking it back in the building and he drove rather than driving the machine in straight you know boomed out like all the way down tucked in or, or you know backwards he drove in with the tracks going forward but the machine was sideways so the boom was it's you know they're, they're 14 foot doors but it's you know a 306 is still not gonna fit it's still there. only 14 he feet. put and it's a pre-engineered it's a pre-engineered metal building too so it's not like it's just you know like post frame or anything yeah. he drove the blade of the 306 through the building and bent and broke like a pre-engineered metal like an i-beam yeah and tore a bunch of siding off and freaked out and probably moved it some more. It was bad. Oh, and, man. uh, that was just one of those things where it's like, dude, like I, you can't like, that's something that like, I, I can't help you there. Like you, you weren't even supposed to be doing that. Man. I can't help you. <laughs> it's, it's just things like that. It's, that's where like, like I said, and you said it too, like just be patient and like wait your turn. Like your time will come. I promise you. Yeah. And if you're not good at it, we're going to tell you pretty quickly like this isn't for you you you're better at you know running the laser or whatever it may be but sure. um everybody wants to to be the excavator operator and you know in the skid steer when it's 90 sure. degrees out i yep. like being in the hole though i love it i i didn't mind i mean i'd be one of the first guys to grab a rake shovel and and sling yeah. some gravel around like you know but i didn't mind it but some guys do and yeah it's it's hard for some people i don't know why and, and not only like can can the patients be tough to it's hard to teach them patience but getting the message across um but sometimes attitudes change too like you know yeah. you, i start to see with like the younger guys like if they're not doing what they want to do they kind of don't really want to be around they don't really want instant gratification yeah yeah they're not willing to like look at this like all right this is a career i have to work my way up take these steps they just yeah. they want to make the big bucks run the big equipment take the cool instagram videos for their stories they don't want to show their buddies hey look i'm in the i'm in the yeah. trench again with the shovel yeah. they want to show yeah. them that they're in the, in the excavator bomb little trucks, do they you know, know that's the that's the that's the most badass thing right there yeah. i'd rather be down in the trench box <laughs> look at me like snapchat but it, no yeah. i don't know apparently being the excavator operators what's cool you know yeah Good yeah, idea. it's uh, yeah, it's it, it's it's an uphill battle, but sure. you know, you figure it out, and the ones that they do all right, they stick it out, and a lot of them done really well for themselves. Sure, yeah, and there's a and you know, kind of going back to you know the the incentives for the young guys to take a look at the industry is there's a ton of opportunity. And if you can have the patience, yeah. if you can, if you can just be a little bit humble, be willing to learn and have some patience, um, there's, there's phenomenal opportunities coming up in the next 10 years. Our workforce is, is disappearing. I think the number is yeah. over the next 10 years, 60%. I don't, I don't have anything to back that up, but 60% of the, the blue collar construction industry workforce is leaving. That's a huge gap. And with yeah. the increased demand is increased pay, increased opportunities. Um, you know, the opportunities are going to be endless. So for guys that want to get into it, like literally now is the best time we've ever seen, you know, that I've yeah. seen in my lifetime and we'll probably ever see uh, see again. Um, there's going to be a lot of, you know, whether it's as an employee or as an entrepreneur getting into the business, there's endless work out there regardless of the economic situation there's always you know infrastructure type stuff that has to be done P things always have to be built so um it's a phenomenal opportunity so you know young guys like you bringing on you know and there's a difference too like you have a different perspective you're you're a younger guy you know if you if you go and work for a boss that's say 60 years old well he's old school <laughs> he's got his ways of doing it he has no filter and he's not yeah. gonna you know he's not gonna you know 
be you sympathetic to the young guys. guys too, oh, though. I've learned you I've learned a ton, a ton from those guys. A ton. A ton. I've but, learned uh, more from the the biggest assholes because deep down they are the nicest guys, um, you know, and they they want to teach you. It just I think it like pisses them off like sometimes like how dumb so like it, me and my generation is we're just like snapchat instagram <laughs> like, uh-huh. just, yeah but Those, what i found with with those older guys is what they, they once they see that you can work and you're willing to work you get all the respect in yep. the world and that that happened to me personally when i was younger with with a crew that i was working with there's a guy and he had a reputation for be like a hard ass hothead and you know would fly yep. off the handle and when he saw how i could move and how i would work and i you know i did what i was supposed to like he he, he was awesome to me i didn't yep. get any of that shit that the other guys got you know so yeah. um goes a long way you know that's your own that's way. one thing i can i can attest my dad put me on his cruise you know, crawl around a roof all summer, you know, just all kinds of different people, like working there right next to them. Like that was when I realized like, wow, if you just work your ass off and work as hard as these guys are working, they don't look at you any differently. It's, it's the, everybody's the same. It's when you are sitting there on your phone, not doing anything, bitching and moaning about everything else, but working. Sure. That's, uh, that's when they're like, screw this kid yep yep and there goes your chance yeah. yep yeah it cool. really is like that too it's it's gone just like that and it's hard to get it back sure and word travels fast too you know it sure does you in know. this industry yeah it tra- it travels very fast that was sure. something i learned too pretty quickly like <laughs> for good wow. or for better or for that worse got, yeah um yeah i mean most of it like thankfully for me you know wasn't super bad but when i realized how that was actually how i kind of ended up leaving where i was working is I told the cat salesman, who's now my cat salesman, who was also uh, where I was working, cat salesman. And within 24 hours, the guy that I was working for knew. I mean, he always knew at some point I was going to leave. He just didn't know it was going to be that early because, like I said, I got that push from some of my buddies. And I was like, all right, I mean, I guess I can do it. And I was like, really? The fucking cat salesman? Like, that's how you're going to find out? How many uh, different uh, people? How- it's- yeah, yeah. You didn't and even get to tell him. To-, to this day, he'll never admit it. Uh, cause I still give him shit about it, but, um, yeah. he, he, I, I had, it just, it's the only logical reason, you know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that's when that I sucks. realized like, oh shit, like everybody talks. Oh yeah. For sure. Yeah. hundred percent. hundred percent. Good deal. Well, Hey man, it was awesome having you on. I wish you luck with your frost shutdown that you have up there. Hopefully that Thank gets you. sorted out sooner than later. We're hoping um, so. I think I think uh, Gretchen Whitmer is going to come through for us, but we'll see. I hope so. It's great. <laughs> it's great to see a young guy kicking ass. I like your style. I like how you're doing it, and uh, I like how you're aggressive, but you're smart and you're kind of taking it. You know, you're taking it slow and, and doing it. You know, one step at a time. But but you're out there and, and you're chasing work. So I think that's awesome. So I wish you the best of luck, and uh, I hope you have a great season. I appreciate it, Matt. Thank you. We'll, awesome. Uh, I'm sure we'll be back. Yes, sir. We'll have to drag the trailer out and, and do one in person sometime. Yeah, I, I, I got I, We got to do one in there. That trailer's yeah. sweet, man. All right, I'll bring it out once the frost lines right. are done. I'm not going to get any fines for that bullshit. So, <laughs> all right, man. It was awesome having you on. Uh, we'll be chatting with you again soon. Have a great day. All right, thanks. All right, we'll see you.